Hey guys, what's up? This is the Clockwork Podcast, but I'm going to try out the video format. I'm going to break down the and give my thoughts on a Conor McGregor and Floyd Mayweather fight. So my first initial thoughts on the fight was, you know, I thought it was a complete farce. Straight away, I was like, you know, Conor should stay in his lane. Conor should stay in MMA, stay in the UFC. Going against someone who's only specialises in, in a specific sport it just seems a bit silly to me. Um, and I was very against it and it was only then I took a step back and I looked at things and I looked at their approach and you know realizing that it really is only another form of fighting and he does specialize kind of in stand-up as well so he has a lot of skills and, and unorthodox techniques that will carry over and benefit him stances and, and movements and stuff like that but let's not get it twisted he's up against Floyd Mayweather who is Arguably the best boxer of all time. I'm using logic here, you know, using facts and statistics and all the rest of it. He Floyd has beaten the best of the best, you know. Arguably, you could kind of make arguments for each one, saying, "Well, were he past their prime, or, or you know, was he waiting, you know?" But he did beat them. At the end of the day, he knows how to win. With this Conor McGregor fight, you know, it's a strange fight for me, and I think, I think. My opinion on this fight is this entire fight, I think, revolves around Floyd in the sense that this fight revolves around Floyd and his mindset and his approach to this fight and his willingness to this fight uh, to fight Conor McGregor. This whole fight for me revolves around, sounds a bit silly, but Floyd Mayweather's taxes. If Floyd is only fighting for money, then I think he will get, um, he's, he's severely underestimating Conor McGregor, severely. But if he's not, if he's genuine and, you know, like he is 40, he's older, but um, it's how much of that skill and talent he still has, um, can he still overcome over Conor McGregor? So my prediction for this fight is going to play out Obviously, Conor's going to run at him. Conor's going to come straight for him. And, you know, as he said, plant his feet in the centre of that ring. And what's Floyd going to do? I feel like Floyd doesn't have the power to stop Conor McGregor. I feel like Conor doesn't really have to worry about a knockout at all. Um, I think the most predictable outcome of this fight is uh, is Mayweather by decision. You know, it's pretty obvious. Um, you know, just outpoint them, outpoint them. But I can't see a lot of damage been done by Floyd. I don't think he's that type of fighter. You know, when's he ever? When's the last time he stopped somebody? You know, he's all like, if he trades with Connor, I think if he trades with Connor, he will get severely flatlined. He will just get knocked out. But he's too clever for that. You know, this. I think Floyd is going to try to make this a repeat of the Pacquiao fight. He's going to jab and jab him and run around them and outpoint them. But it's up to Connor to stop that. And by stopping that, it was interesting enough. Chris Eubank Sr. was on, um, I think it was the MMA Hours uh, podcast. He was interviewing them. And he gave a great breakdown on the fight. And he was comparing Conor McGregor to uh, Steve Collins, the second fight. And he said he he lost that second fight. And he was describing Connor to Steve and kind of saying, they're both Irish, but they also have this crazy attitude, this crazy mental strength this warrior strength nearly and he just he said the man steve collins ran at him literally ran across the ring at him for um the, the full duration of the fight and he said he's you know he's a very technical boxer and he said he just couldn't adjust to it he said he was too unorthodox just too imposing for him to set up all his technical ability and i think connor's going to do the exact same thing I think people are counting Connor out, and and some of the silly talk by all of these um an- analysts and all the rest of it. Connor's not going to lay a glove, like not lay one punch on him. It's just they must be saying this stuff to get views on YouTube. It's silliness to me, you know, silliness. He's a professional fighter. That's disrespectful to MMA, in my opinion. Saying the, this this nonsense. He's not going to lay a glove on him. He's not going to win around him. Look. He's a multiple, multiple time world champion. This is not a guy you're picking off the street and putting in against a professional fighter. He's not that. But the way boxing are talking about him, 
is. Another way, if if Connor beats Floyd, he disgraces boxing. It doesn't have to be that way. Why does it have to be so negative? If Connor beats Floyd, why not just bring up the sport of MMA? Just say, Jesus, isn't it amazing the skill level these guys are showing? You know, 10 years ago, where was MMA? Where was the UFC and, and, and Bellator and all of these little com- Where were they? What were they doing? 10 years ago. And now they have abilities to cross over champions and compete with other world champions in a specific sport like boxing. Isn't that incredible? The talent that these guys possess. No, it has to be in Muddy's boxing. It does this to boxing. It brings boxing down. And I'm like, it doesn't have to be like that. Both sports um, can easily grow by using different things, different tactics by adapting. Boxing's not as big as it once was. It's just not. Um, I feel like it's declining. I feel like it is. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But pay-per-view numbers would argue difference. And who's the fight coming up? Is it Canelo and Triple G? Who's talking about it? People are interested in, 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 in Floyd and Connor. They want a spectacle. They want something energetic. They don't want kind of fighters just sitting there and do this and that and going through the whole rigmarole. And, and they want something new. The last point about the analysts is... The last, the last stop of the world tour was in London and instead of having the typical Showtime announcers they had uh, the London announcers, British kind of boxers and I could tell they were British boxers because I think they even pronounced Aldo's name wrong when we were talking about Connor's past opponents. So the press conference was on two guys talking about a fight we're going to have and 20,000 people, 15, 20,000 people showed up to watch these two guys talk about a fight they were going to have, okay? The whole show happened, ended, the stadium was empty, and the two commentators sat there rather than saying, Jesus, that was a great spectacle, feel the energy, the amount of people I was in there for just a, a not even a weigh-in, a, just a, a promotion, a, a press conference, and the only thing they could say was, wasn't that just terrible? their language, their demeanour, their this, their that. And I'm like, you don't understand. You can take this. You don't have to, you know, take everything word for word. Just take bits and pieces going, you know what, we can benefit from this, you know. We can take maybe the press conference, maybe have them their own segments. Not even realising the heads the people that want to hear all of these behind the scenes people talking and boxing, you know, little things like that. This moaning, this driveling, people don't care. People want to hear the people talking like Connor and Floyd go back and forth. This this silliness, but people enjoy that. Why not embrace that more? It's fun, you know? People don't give a fuck about Leonard Ellerby and, and listen to him talk with all due respect, you know? People don't care. Dana White caught on to that and what his press conferences in the UFC before and after. It's about the fighter, you know? That's what people want. And I think that's why maybe boxing's fallen behind a bit. And, you know, that's what I'm, overall, my main point about this is it doesn't have to be so negative. Both sports can just look at this spectacle and go, Jesus, that's amazing. How can we make other spectacles or other boxing fights like this more, you know? How can we make the personality shine more and, and all the rest of it? And look at even Embedded. Embedded's amazing, a huge part of UFC. The behind the scenes and all the rest of it. And it gives them their own character and lets people get involved. And, and behind the scenes, with these, these incredible human beings that fight in a cage against each other and how lax they are coming up to it. So yeah, that's all I want to say about that. But I feel like it's it's this whole fight's coming out a very negative way and it doesn't need to be. These are two incredible fighters. I want to give them the due respect and go, let's just sit back, relax and enjoy these two fighters coming together and then pick up the pieces when it's done, you know? Forget all the training methods and, and, and their pasts and whatever. It's these two sports kind of nearly come together. These two massive egos, personalities, characters come together clash and one side is going to be wrong you know one side is going to fall and it's fun and i think that's what's so intriguing and i cannot fucking away for it it's gonna be amazing uh last part of this podcast i just want to talk about the betting now i was going to do this last night before the weigh-ins and i forgot to i'm getting a coffee um and floyd before the fight oh no sorry connor before Connor to win the fight was uh, two to seven, and funnily enough, Connor to win by knockout TKO was four to one. 
which obviously if you're betting on Connor, you're betting on him KO, take KO. Connor's not gonna win by points. You know, it's just silliness. After the weigh-ins, straight after the weigh-ins, literally straight after. I was gonna do this last night, so I checked the the um the betting. Connor drifted out to four to one just to win the fight. And I'm thinking, must be because he was dehydrated or something and the boxing fans didn't realise like what he looks like before and after a fight. But uh, confidence definitely slipped in him uh, after after the weigh-ins for some reason. Now, he has fought, look, he came in at 153. This guy doesn't miss weight. Um, look at Aldo. He came in 145. He was very, very drained. Next day, he looked great. He starts him in 13 seconds. Arguably the best, one of the best featherweights of all time, 13 seconds. You know, don't read into this too much, this weight thing. You know, Conor will be 170 tomorrow night. Floyd will be 140 something. It's a big difference. But in my opinion, I'm going to go my final verdict. Um, My brain says Floyd. My heart says Connor, so I'm gonna I'm gonna live this. I'm gonna go into it, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Connor because I'm Irish and because I like what he stands for. I like what he's doing. You know, he's got the balls to do it, and I think he can. You know, one side's gonna be wrong. Floyd is. I'm gonna dismantle. I'm gonna walk through him. It's gonna be the easiest fight in my career. Connor's thinking the same thing. One of them is wrong, and. Uh, Look, I'm going with Connor. Connor by, I think Connor's going to shock him early on, and let's have a few unorthodox things because that's what Connor's relying on. And I'm going with it. I'm going with it. Um, I'm not saying bet your house on it. I'm saying I might put a few quid on it, but um, I want to go for Connor knockout, and I'll give him rounds one, one to four, maybe one to six. I'd say one to four. And if you don't see the knockout by then, or Connor doing something or scoring by then, everybody knows Floyd will download all of his new moves, all of his patterns, and the rest of the fight is going to be a long fight of just slugging. I think if he doesn't get him out of there quick, it's going to be long, drawn out. Floyd's going to make it as boring as possible, so that's going to be it. Um, yeah, Connor by KO. Connor's going to flatline him, knock him down once, going to get up. The whole place is going to be screaming. He's going to knock him down again. And the ref's going to be like, shit, do I stop this? He, he's, he's, he's shaking. It's going to happen earlier on. It's going to happen early on in the fight. That's what's going to happen. So, This has been a new uh, experiment with, with the video form of the podcast. Um, I thought it would be interesting. If you like it, um, please leave a comment. Um, and even give me your opinions. Your your. I know a lot of people disagree with me, you know, straight away. Some people are, Floyd's going to win, you know, don't be so stupid. And I was like that before. I still am, which is why I'm not putting a lot of money on Connor. But uh, I don't like betting on things like that as well. And out of principle, I could never bet on Floyd, you know, against an Irish man and against, you know, Conor McGregor. I could never bet against one of my own, ever. Um, I can't wait for the fight. So, yeah, please leave a comment and... Tell me what you guys think. I'd like to get the discussion going if you like. And uh, yeah, yeah. I'll see you guys in the next one. I'll make a I'll make a video tomorrow, and we'll all see. We'll all see. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys then. Come on, Connor.